Good morning, Takahito. Hi, good morning. Hi, Christine. I can't hear you. That's because I muted. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> That'll do it. Can you go ahead and bring up the slides? Sure. I think we may need to give people a minute or two. Yeah, that's, there's something strange. Can you see my slide? No. Yeah, and, and I cannot stop sharing. That's strange. Um, sometimes I've seen where Zoom thinks that you are sharing, but you are not. Try starting a screen share again. Okay, now mm -hmm. I think you can see. Okay. Now I can yeah, see. Th that was exactly the case. <laughs> I I don't know if it's just Linux or if it's everything, but it does that sometimes. Hi um, guys, morning. 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 I think we probably want to um, wait a couple minutes because everybody is logging on right now. Yes. I think today will be a little, well, in some ways today will be less intense. And in some ways, um, now is when the real work starts. By the way, RCF is really uh, off. Um, I have not confirmed. I can do it and I can try in just a minute. I just logged in. <laughs> oh, you just logged in. So it's not totally off. Oh, that's good. I mean, I think if you're using RCF, you're sort of playing with fire. <laughs> yeah, we should not. I'm, I'm, if I had been done for another 30 seconds, I probably got a very angry message from Jerome. <laughs> <laughs> 
get off Arcia. <laughs> I mean, they can just kick people off, right? Yeah, but Jerome likes to. Assert. Well, yes, Jerome is Jerome. But do do you think so? Today we um, use only Docker. I, I I think that we will have um, we will have a a couple people who don't have a Docker installation who are just going to have to catch up offline later. Mm -hmm. Or do who don't have Docker or access to some other working Rivet installation. I think, though, almost everybody does. Okay. So, but I think today the homework is heavier and the interactive components are lighter. Yeah, maybe. Okay, we have 17 people online. Um, and therefore i would say go ahead and take it away antonio okay so good morning everybody i think today we're going to start uh, the good stuff where we really start implementing uh, the components of the analysis so let me start uh, talking about particles that's uh, Major point in your analysis, the, the kind of particles that you're going to use. So uh, here in the init part, I have three examples of uh, particles that you can declare. Uh, as I said, in Rivet, we uh, declare these objects uh, projections. And they are declared here in the init part. So in this line, for example, I declare final state uh, these are final state particles. Um, the, I mean, these are particles uh, that we call stable uh, for those more familiar with uh, some details of generators. Uh, those are particles with status code uh, one. So uh, pions, kaons, electrons, uh, particles that will not decay. Um, Okay, we have here a final state, the object, and you pass some cuts uh, for your particles. For example, the absolute value of the pseudo rapidity, less than 0.5, and particles with PT above 0.15 GeV. So that's basically uh, how you declare, and then you have to use this command, declare where you pass the object, and also a string that it, you can choose, uh, depends on, um, I mean, you, you can choose the, the string, but uh, later in the analyze part, you have to use the same string to uh, recover your final state particles. I will show this later. Um, another kind of particles that you can declare is prompt final state. Uh, these are final state particles uh, connected to the hard process. For example, if your paper, uh, you need to implement, for example, uh, direct photons, uh, you can use a uh, prompt final state to uh, get this, uh, this prompt photons. Uh, another kind of particle that uh, you will find in many papers are unstable particles. Uh, for example, D0, D plus, uh, pion zero, uh, all particles that will uh, decay and you pass again uh, the cuts of your particles and you can also for example pass cuts on uh, PID the, to identify the particle so for example here I use uh, the absolute PID 421 it says D0 and so my unstable particles will contain only the zeros um, yeah, in your init, uh, you will have your histograms. Probably uh, most of you already uh, implement, if not all, uh, most of your uh, histograms that you have uh, in data. And also we have counters. For example, if I have uh, in my paper different centralities, I need one counter 
for each centrality interval. Uh, here, for example, I just booked two um, counters, one for uh, gold, gold, zero to 10 uh, percent most central events, and also one for 30 to 50 percent most central. And if my paper has more than one collision system, for example, uh, gold, gold, and PP, I have also uh, to declare uh, one counter for uh, PP. I will have one counter for each collision system uh, and energy, and also for different centralities in that given uh, collision system. And, and then, you know. So, Antonio? Yes. I actually have a question on this counters. Can I ask? Sure. <laughs> this is kind of new. To, so, I haven't used this counter before. So, I, I always use like kind of global double variables, right? That just counts the weights every time I fill it in. Right. So is this the same as that? Uh, when you normalize this, does this automatically know when you sum the events? It's basically sum of weights for the events that pass? Kind of, but uh, if you use that, I think it will not divide for different centralities. So that's why you have to do it uh, manually. Yeah, that, so manually we had a different counter for different centrality binning, and then you fill it in, you know, Properly, but okay. So then this this one automatically does that. Uh, yes, once you I mean, it. you're going to fill for uh, those events with the given centrality. Yeah. Okay. And then it will contain the, the sum of weights. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Thanks. No problem. Um, there are other cuts that you have you you can use for uh, your particles. I put some of them here. Um, uh, eta, uh, rapidity, phi, energy, PT, mass, um, PID, you have uh, many options, uh, charge uh, to, to use as cuts uh, when you declare your, your particles. Uh, so one homework for you is to identify the, the kind of particles that your paper use. Uh, for example, if your paper uh, uh, contains pi zero, you probably need to declare unstable particles to get pi zeros. Um, if your paper, uh, it's only charter particles, for example, you can declare a final state and pass a cut here uh, to get only uh, absolute charge uh, above zero. Um, and yes, and then you have to to check your paper and try to understand what kind of particles you need. Um, okay, so uh, let's move to the analyze part. Here's where uh, most of your code uh, will be. And I start here uh, showing uh, how you get the centrality. And remember that we declared here uh, yesterday the, the centrality in the init. And then here we will get the centrality values for each event. Uh, this method analyze will be called for each event in your, uh, that you have in your simulation. So uh, that's the way we get the, the centrality, uh, the centrality projection. And this will be the same uh, independently of uh, the experiment star phoenix. Um, see this will be the, the same. And also here where you declare a double and get the centrality from this projection. Uh, this uh, variable C uh, will carry, it will contain the, the centrality uh, of the event. And then you can um, act accordingly depending on your paper. For example, if I'm interested in two centrality intervals, zero to 10 and 30 to 50, I have to fill my counter uh, according to the centrality. And the way it's done, it's with this method fill. And you don't pass any arguments. Just uh, get the, the, the object, fill without arguments. It will store the, the weights of the event. And this will be used later for normalizations. If you need to normalize your histogram uh, by number of events, uh, that's what you what you're going to to use. Sorry, 
Um, you can also uh, reject events uh, above a certain centrality if this uh, will maybe uh, make your code runs faster. Uh, if you're, for, for example, if, if you, your paper uses only uh, zero to 10 most central events, you don't, don't want to waste time with other centrality. So you can use this uh, command uh, Vito event and it will reject uh, the events uh, above a certain centrality. Okay, um, not all, only the centrality, the, the important part is to get your particles here in the analyze part. And the way it's done, it's shown here in this line. So you have this object particles, which is basically a vector uh, of objects uh, of the kind uh, of the type particle. And you use this command apply projection. Um, the class of your, of your uh, projection. In this case, I'm getting final state. And I'm using uh, here event, which is uh, the, the event, uh, the, the current event. It's always uh, this object that you have to pass. And here you have to pass a string which is the same string that you have uh, declared here, final state or your, uh, from your prompt final state or unstable particle. So when you declare here in the init, we choose a string and we use the same string here. And then we use this method uh, particles. So it will get all the particles in this projection. And since we have this vector of particles, we can loop over it using uh, for or there are other ways to do it, but I think this is one of the easiest way to loop over the particles. Uh, you declare this object particle and it will get uh, all the, the objects inside your vector. And here you can uh, apply some uh, some requirements, for example, in centrality or maybe uh, in, in your particle. For example, here I'm looking for uh, chaos, uh, charted chaos, uh, by using this uh, method PID. And then if it's satisfied, I will fill my histogram, uh, also using the method fill. But in this case, since this is a histo1d, uh, I'm passing uh, the PT of the particle. And the way we do it, it's using this method, uh, PT, and we uh, divide by uh, this global variable uh, GEV to be sure that the, uh, the unity will be right. Okay, so here I just uh, included some uh, explanation in case you want to have a look at the slides later and try to remember uh, what all of this means. And so it's easier to, to have a look later. Okay, about finalize. Uh, finalize is basically where you're going to uh, make normalizations. Um, for example, here I have my histogram and I will use this uh, method scaleW and I will scale by one over uh, my counter uh, calling this method sum w. So this will get the sum of weights stored in my counter. Uh, in this case, for example, uh, this one, uh, where I fill the, the weights of the events. So I will uh, normalize my, my histogram, use the, the sum of weights. Uh, this basically um, normalize your histogram by number of events. And one important thing is that Rivet will automatically divide your histograms by beam width. So you don't need to do this. This will be done automatically. Uh, alternatively, you can uh, use some scale. For example, if you're uh, calculating uh, invariant yields, usually we divide it by uh, two pi. So you can declare some scale and just uh, scale your histogram accordingly, uh, taking this variable and dividing by the sum of events. There is a dash missing here. Um, yeah, very similar to what you did here. 
and also uh, racial plots uh, and finalize uh, is the place where the racial plots are done. So uh, remember uh, yesterday that we saw how to declare uh, histograms for racial plots. So uh, if we want a ratio of k on over pi on, for example, uh, I have to fill my histograms in the analyze part with k -ons. And here I will scale uh, using the number of um, the sum of weights. The same for the pions. And then at the end, I will use this method divide. And I pass uh, the, the histogram for chaos, the histogram for pions, and they scatter 2D that I declared uh, yesterday. And, and yes, that's how it's done, the, the, uh, the racial plots. Uh, this scatter 2D will have the, the ratio of k ons over pi ons. Uh, okay, we will make a stop here, but just for um, David had a question, or he raised his hand. Sure. I, yeah, so yesterday when you showed us the uh, booking all of the histograms and booking the ratio, it appears here that, it, I mean, is it entirely functionally the same if you made your your ratio histogram in the finalized function, like you're not independently filling it. Um, so is it just good coding hygiene to declare your ratio histograms at the beginning, even though really, if I've understood correctly, you don't do anything with them until you get to finalize. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thanks. No problem. Yes. Let me say a few things that may not be immediately obvious as well. Um, Rivet now allows you to run over input files in batches. So you don't have to run over all of the events that you're trying to analyze at once. And then when you merge them, it doesn't, it, there's a way to merge them where it doesn't redo everything, but it redoes just finalize. So keep that in mind when you're writing your code because you're going to want to set it up so that um, everything that you want done only once after you've added entries is done and finalized. Yes. It's also good to add some protection. Um, so where Antonio has dividing by the sum of weights, if you're running on um, the small test sample of 10 events that we have in the repository, just for very simple baseline tests, you're going to have a lot of entries that a lot of histograms that have no entries. So it would be a good idea to make sure before you do that division that the sum of weights is actually greater than zero. Yeah, that's good practice in programming. <laughs> okay, so uh, before the pause, um, just some information. I mean, uh, you booked your histograms, you filled your histograms, you scaled your histograms, and now probably you're uh, very uh, looking forward to uh, see these histograms. So the way you do it is using this command, rivet uh, mqheml uh, dash dash pwd rivet.yoda. Uh, rivet.yoda is the output of your rivet analysis. Uh, maybe you choose another one, but uh, rivet.yoda is the standard. Just put the, the name that you used. And this will create a HTML file and, and you can open it either, and then there's a link to all the figures that you created. Uh, of course, you can also, instead of using the HTML, uh, just enter um, inside the folder and see your plots in, in PDF and also PNG formats. Um, yeah, th there are a lot of things in Analyze uh, that will be very different depending on your analysis. So uh, a good reference is other analysis that were already done. 
and you can look at them uh, here in the in the Rivet GitLab, and you have the access of analysis that were already uh, committed to the Rivet code, and also in the the Git repository that you are uh, working, uh, there are other analysis already imp implemented there that you can use as reference or just ask us how, how you could do something that we can, and then we can help. Okay, so I think, um, how should we do? We stop here and uh, maybe people try to implement uh, one histogram. Um, Maybe not so, off then right now, maybe just one. So you fill the histogram and then you um, scale it, normalize it and try to, to plot I, it. I think depending on the analysis, the implementation could get very hairy. But what they can do is, and it's going to be very different for everybody. So this is now where we split and the it's not as easy to keep everybody moving along together. What at least everybody could do is run rivet make HTML and because you had booked at least one histogram yesterday, it won't be a very interesting plot, but you can at least make sure that this works and that you um, that you uh, can see the output. And yes, as Ajita pointed out, uh, people using ACF are cannot work because this is the scheduled the terribly inconvenient scheduled outage that was announced late last week um so if RCF, you people using RCF. sorry i'm sorry thank you we have a cluster at ut called acf which is um sorry for the confusion yes people using rcf are unable to run so um i think some of you already tried rivet make html um, go ahead and try that right now. And then in the participants list, uh, if you uh, are able to do this, click yes. If you are having issues, you can ask for help or click no. And if you're not able to do it because you don't have access to a Rivet installation, um, select coffee so that we know that you've not done it but uh, that we're not going to, you're going to have to go back and try this when, when RCF is up again. And I may call on people. Will, I think you've already done this a lot. Am I right? Um, yeah, so I've done this before in other analyses. Right now, I just added in a uh, basically example plot, which I'm okay. trying to run, because um, I haven't quite figured out how I'm going to sort the uh, particles by particle type yet. Um, so this is just uh, every particle in the same plot, basically. Um, that works. I am still getting an error. I think I just need to update Rivet, actually, in order to be able to run this. So uh, I guess um, mark me down as a coffee. Uh, oh, OK. So can you, can you do that? Because I can't actually mark you. All right. Um, and then, uh, Charles, you're going to be in the same spot as Will. Ajiro, I think you did this yesterday. Yeah, I did. Okay. Can you mark yes for me just so I can keep oh. track of people? Oh, I thought I did. Huh. Uh, okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, then Krista. 
Yes, I'm trying right now on okay. Docker. I just did git pull. Actually, it's quite easy on Docker. I, I tried again um, the entire process on Docker yesterday since RS, um, RSCF is going to be down today. And it's a lot easier on Docker because you can like manipulate things easier. So I wish I had done that first. We did have someone try Docker on Windows 10 and it failed. So, uh, I would I not recommend. Maybe. Sorry? Well, maybe it's system dependent. I think. I, yeah, and I can't help anybody on Windows. Uh, my, okay. my Windows information is two decades out of date. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would not recommend people try to install Docker during today's meeting simply because it's going to take a little bit. Um, Tomash? Uh, hi. Uh, so for me, uh, I am able to produce uh, the plots. However, I have still empty this analysis and finalize uh, functions so i have the plus but without any relevant information so okay I'm... that counts as a yes so far ah okay i think um ye yeah so actually what david just put in the chat that when he runs rivet make html he gets a bunch of blank histograms one for every histogram he booked that's exactly what you should see um and you well you should see for the ones that had data in hep data um if you have the if you downloaded the data from the sandbox instead of having rivet pull them from hep data directly um, if you're not seeing the data, usually that's because you didn't run that ugly command on said to... I, I see the said. data. Ju just okay. so, I have the label rivet and I don't see the rivet. Uh, okay. the rivet. David is not seeing the... Uh, it does not sound like, David, you're seeing the data. Yeah, I downloaded the HEP data um, from the sandbox. And then I used all the book command. So it, it so it, it saw them and it complained when I messed up the book command. So at least it was, it was there was a one-to-one -one relationship. So it was reading okay. off of them, but it just made a bunch of blank histograms. I did run a set command, but maybe I screwed it up. Okay, did, there's two common errors in Antonio. Otherwise it probably takes a little debugging. Um, and the, the first one is that if you, so if you, if it still has that, rivet analysis name in the Yoda file, it will not find the data at all. So you won't see the data. And the other is, I believe if you don't have the dash dash PWD, um, that it will not find the data. Is that right, Antonio? Yes. So, Wait, for, for the make HTML, you need the dash dash PWD? Yes. Oh. If you want it to find the data. Oh, the, the data, not the Monte Carlo that you have in the same. Right. Right, 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 right. Yeah, okay. Okay, cool. I will try it out. I, I ran everything on RCF, so I'm flying blind here. But Okay, okay. So I think then you are a coffee. Okay, I will update well, that. Well, one. okay, close enough. All I'm trying to do is see if we have actually not ignored people who are stuck. Um, and we have a lot of coffee cups, but everyone is either a coffee or a yes. I like coffee, so we're getting a coffee. All right. Um, Antonio, sh shall we proceed? Um, okay. Um... Okay, here is just some information about um, your dot plot file, but I think this will be uh, better discussed tomorrow. Uh, in your dot plot, you have um, some uh, fields like title, x label, y label that you can use LaTeX to make the uh, the axes and the titles 
uh, period. Um, but yeah, I, I think we'll talk more about this tomorrow. Um, okay, here's some uh, information if you have uh, different collision systems and uh, energies. Um, for example, uh, something very common in heavy ions, if you have uh, RAA, you're going to need uh, something like a gold-gold and PP collisions. And so uh, one thing that you have to uh, be sure is that rivet uh, it's filling uh, the right histograms because you have some of them that uh, need to be filled only with gold gold and some of them only with PP. And one way that you can uh, do this is by uh, looking directly the, the beam and the energy uh, of the, the, co the collision system uh, in your simulation. And this is done in the analyze. Uh, I, I will not cover uh, this method here because uh, there are some cases, for example, if you're using uh, dual, uh, this will not work very well. And the way I will show here will work always. Um, okay, so um, you have to declare this global variable, uh, a string that you could in principle call the way you, you want, but here I called be an opt. And then in your init, we will, you will pass this command exactly the way it is here. Um, so basically you will have internally um, a flag called the bin that you can choose uh, as gold, gold or PP, and then your code will know uh, how to fill your histogram. Um, okay, so how this will work in your um, uh, in, in your analyze. Uh, okay, you have this, um, uh, sorry, it, it should be been opt. It's, I, I will fix in, in a minute. But okay, you have this uh, bin opt that you could call uh, PP or gold gold. And then depending on the flag that you passed when you uh, run your uh, rivet command, uh, it will fill um, the histograms for PP or for gold gold. Um, and in your finalize, you have to implement something like this. Uh, this will basically uh, look at your uh, counters. Here, there's a loop over all the counters that you have. And it will look if the name of the counter contains gold gold or if it contains uh, PP. And it will check if it, the sum of weights there is uh, more than zero. Uh, if it's zero, it means that you did not fill uh, the, the histograms. For example, here, if it's uh, zero, uh, it means that you did not fill uh, the histograms for gold gold. And here, uh, it means that you did not fill the, the histograms for PP. And then at the end, you check if, uh, if your histograms for PP and gold gold are filled. If one of them are not filled, you return and don't execute anything and finalize. So how, how, the, how is the idea here? You can run uh, your rivet analysis over uh, PP simulation, and then you will not run finalize. But do you have an output for PP? Uh, and then you have an output that all your histograms uh, for PP are filled and you keep this file. And then you run again your rivet analysis, but this time you pass a flag for gold gold. And then all the histograms for gold gold will be uh, filled. Uh, and then uh, you have two outputs, one for PP, one for gold gold. And then we we use uh, a command uh, which is um, rivet merge, and this command will merge both outputs and we will call finalize and normalize all your histograms and make the ratios. So that's uh, basically the idea. 
uh, at first look, it, it could sound very complicated, but if it's your case that you have uh, more than one collision system, uh, don't, don't worry, you can uh, more or less blindly implement what you have here. Uh, if you have uh, more details, if you need more, more help, we, we, can, we can help. Uh, one important part is that uh, since you, you're pass, you will be passing a flag to your rivet, you have to add these two options in the uh, .info file in a very similar way that you did for the centrality. There, you, for the centrality, you had this flag as sent and you pass some variables like a gen, imp, ref. And here, uh, what we're going to do is to create this uh, flag bin and pass uh, and declare some possible values like gold, gold, and pp. Uh, these, these are not standard, but uh, I would recommend to use uh, lowercase just to be sure, uh, be easier to identify that it's a value of your flag. And you, you can add more flags depending. Uh, on your collision system, if you have the gold, uh, gold, gold uh, 200 GV or gold, gold 62 GV, uh, doesn't matter, you, you can uh, add here. And this will be the same uh, strings that you're going to get here because of this command. This, this, the, the strings that you declared here, uh, you're going to pass in a very similar way that you pass the, the, the centrality flag. And you can use this to tell you that, okay, these histograms are PP, fill this one, or this simulation is gold, gold, so fill only this, this one. So that's the, the basic idea. Um, okay, so I, I think we uh, reach the end of day two doesn't mean that we don't have work uh, in fact i think the work starts now yeah i think we have uh i think because we've scheduled to go until noon and i think people are going to need help um we should use it we have i've set up uh three breakout rooms um and I would suggest that you use them. Um, and the first one, and you can, so we have Ragov in room one, Christian in room two. Well, he's still in the main room right now. Um, and uh, Vitautas um, in room three. So I'm gonna direct you, you all need to figure out how to call the how to identify the particles that um, you are trying to use. So for instance, for direct photons, you want to select prompt particles and then select the photon. Um, Antonio mentioned what you do for pi zeros, um, which will be the same thing as eta's. Um, if you have questions about what you're going to need to do for that, uh, you should talk to Christian. Um, and then Vitautas is a flow expert, and I know that there have been a lot of developments um, in Rivet on how you implement flow analyses. Um, so if you are doing flow, you probably should talk to him at least a little bit and make sure you know all of the utilities that may be at your disposal, um, because Antonio and I are not experts in that. At least I am not. Um, and then Raghav is much more well versed in RCF and RIC specific issues. Um, and so that's a generic way to divide up where the experts are. Um, and if you're in the main room, we will either try to help you or to direct you to which room you should try to join. So let me, let's see if people have 
specific questions that they want to ask. And I'm for those of you, which it's about half of everybody um, who, well, uh, it's a, yeah, it's about half of the participants can't work right now because they don't have um, access to RCF. So for you guys, at the very least, you should uh, make sure you know how to identify the right set of particles. It says like breakout room in progress, so you're not able to, oh, to attend just yet. Um, you guys should be able to, uh, so I set this up so you should be able to join any room um, without me assigning you. Um, I can assign you as well, and if I assign you, then you get an invitation to join a specific room. So I haven't, I, so I'm not sure exactly what you see. I know that have allowing participants to join rooms without me assigning them is a little bit dependent on the exact Zoom version and whether or not you have had the latest update. So let me know if I need to assign you to a room. Yeah, I think I need um, room two, please. Okay, and uh, I that was Ajiro? Yes. Oh, so I should be already in the rooms. All right, I'll, I'll go there. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, hi, uh, I'm Wei Zhuang, and uh, I also want to go to the room in the flow, but I can't see any. Oh, okay, you want the flow room? Yes. And th you said this is Wei Zhuang? Yes, Wei Zhuang. Okay. Ms. Hai, Shandor, can you put me in room one for unstable particles? Pi zero and eta. Uh, room, but you, if you want um, help making sure you know um, which particles, that's room two. Yeah, I'll put them, that's one. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Hi, morning. Can you help put me in room two as well? And this is Stacy Ann? Yes. Hi, this is Thomas. Can you also put me the, the room over, over there? I'm going to discuss the unstable particle I'm looking for. Thank you. Great. <laughs> All right. Anyone with question so uh right now we have a ton of people with christian a couple people with vitautas and no one with ragav ragav would be really good um if you uh, also if you're not really sure for in ah and i see one more request um so Raghav would be good if you are not really sure how to, for instance, find unidentified charged particles, something like that. I think Raghav, well, Christian or Raghav could probably do that. All right, we have. Um, um, Christine, can you move me to the room for uh, identifying particles? Yep. All right. I got rivets sourced correctly on ACF, by the way. Cool. So. <clears throat> Hi, Christine. You, you can put me in, in the, the same room. All right, so Christian's got everybody I, today. Yesterday, Raghav had everybody. Today, Christian has everybody. Uh, OK, so yes, I will put you with Raghav, David. 
And now the only people left in the main room are me, Antonio, and Ajita. Ajita, do you need help with anything? Hi, I, I mean, I don't know. Like I, so my uh, particles that I'm interested in are just like uh, electrons from heavy flavor. I thought maybe that wouldn't be too complicated, uh, but I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I can't do I can't do too state. much more than that. So <laughs> you can use final state, and there is in Rivet a, a method uh, that you can check if it's from charm or bottom, uh, and then it makes life easier. Okay. Yeah. So I mean, I was not sure if it was any going to be anything complicated, so I didn't choose a breakout from here. Um, Antonio, do you can you point Ajita to an example that does that, or to which lines? Um, yes, I have There's an example in one of the slides, right? Or to choose specifically from every flavor that might be the more complicated part. Yeah, I, I have. Um, yeah, d d d give me a moment that I I think I have what you need. I have an analysis of dimensions, prompt dimensions. So maybe this will help you. Hello, hi, this is Takahito. Uh, the breakout rooms are occupied, so can I ask questions here? Y yes. Um, so right now, um, Antonio is looking something up for Ajita. OK. Um, mm -hmm. It may take a little bit, so why don't you go ahead and ask the question, and we'll see. OK, yeah. So let me share my screen to ask questions. OK. Yep. So I'm trying to uh, use pi zero decay photons for the event frame determination. And then, uh, so I, I'm following the example written in your slide. So uh, for now, I just put this eta selection and then I put this pi zero code obtained from PDG uh, Monte Carlo page. And then I, I'm not sure how to specify the decay uh, Pattern. Ah, interesting. Yeah. I think, well, let's see if Antonio knows the answer to that. Otherwise, it may be a question for Christian. Christian, okay. Um, because, so Christian is a, is one of the Rivet developers. Okay, good. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> He's, uh, and he also is uh, a developer for Pythia on Gintir. Oh, good. <laughs> so he's really the gold standard. Now you can see by the topic that uh, everybody <laughs> today, today is where everybody is after Christian. Okay, good. Okay, I will try to ask him. You. Okay. okay. You could hang on if you want and see if Antonio knows the answer after he's done, um, but I'm not yes. sure. Um, okay, anyway, I should stop sharing. Okay, Christian's room is pretty much occupied. <laughs> okay. Yes, on the yeah, other hand, I'm, yeah. Yeah, let me stay here for a while. Okay. What Antonio is doing now is that Ajita is doing uh, non-photonic electrons. So uh, then you need to 
you need a final state electron, but then you want to look at whether it came from heavy flavor. Mm -hmm. um, you actually may need something similar. That is that if you have a final state photon and you could look and see if it came from a pi zero, it would then be a decay pi zero. Oh yeah, that, that would be easy. Yes, I just needed to track parent. So how do you, variety. sorry, like how do you, um apply cut only on a one particular histogram like the just like where you feel it you can just provide a if condition yes yeah, so in antonio's slides he had how you tell let me um can you still see my slides because i no a... no Not on the screen. Now, all right, I think Antonio who may just have started sharing. Ajita, are you uh, on Slack? I'm not on Slack, I think. <laughs> you should be. Okay. Okay, so I just started sharing my slide, my screen so that I could share Antonio's slides. And what you can do if you want a specific code, a specific particle is this right here that um, you look Just for. Use the PID for. Yeah, the and these and are channel. these are the PDG codes that mm -hmm. are all used by most Monte Carlos. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So I, just, I, you, I will paste. Uh, on the chat I th comments. Okay, sure. That I think, can... uh, uh, yeah, I mean, that's like what we do in gen label, any, like when you have FMC information, right? So, yeah. Now, I am going to say you should join the Slack. What's your email again, Ajita? Um, it's, I, I don't know which one I've given, like maybe the RCF one. Um, so, Ajita at rcf.rik.dnl.gov. So I just, I pasted in the chat two comments. Uh, basically it's two methods that you can use for the, the particles that you are looping, which is from bottom or from charm. And it will return false or true if the particle comes from bottom or charm. Oh, so, so if you are looking- I don't looking even need like PID information if I use this method? Uh, no, oh, okay. it will just, uh, it will work for uh, all particles. Oh, okay. And so if you have only, uh, for example, a final state with electrons, you mm -hmm. can just use this to see if it comes from bottom or charm. Oh, okay. That, that's much more convenient, I think. You don't have to list all the PID. Yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you. No problem. Um, I think we lost a Jita, or at uh, least I'm in Slack oh, right okay. now. Okay, I thought you were speaking, and then we suddenly lost you. Okay. Yeah, I think I muted myself while talking. I will leave for a minute because my Zoom is having a strange okay. behavior. It, it acting like I'm still sharing something. Yeah, it it does that. I yeah. Just a minute. It is a Zoom bug. Okay. Okay, much better now. Oh, that was fast. Okay, we have right now, so Ajita Takahito 
Tomash and Zendong. Um, so Zendong, what we are doing today, we've already, I think you, I'm not sure if you, I think you connected late, not that you got disconnected. Is that right? Um, no, I, no. I just uh, connected. You just connected. Okay. So, okay. So we went through the slides for today, which if you pull them up um, from the agenda, it's slides 28 through 39. Um, and what we're doing now is mainly doing breakout. Well, we're most, most people are in a breakout room um, getting help. So we've gone through the guts of how um, of how you actually uh, write the analysis. Um, and then the the homework is two things. One is make sure you know how to identify the particles in your specific paper, which is paper dependent. Um, people are in the breakout room with Christian for that. Um, and then the other homework assignment is to implement at least one um, histogram all the way through um, to make sure that everything is working. Um, so I think, well, at the very least, you should make sure you know how to identify your particles. Um, um, that you just one quick question. Uh, if you, uh, we know that the RCF is down today. Yes. Uh, can I work without that? Is it uh, you have two choices that uh, you can try to get a Docker installation working, although it se seems like um, it seems like the Docker installation um, is, does not work on Windows. Um, if you would like help with the Docker installation, then um, right now we've been I've been putting people into um, into Ragav's room for help with Docker. Um, and the other option is to wait until RCF comes back on. It's scheduled to be back on at uh, at 6 p.m. today. We will see if hopefully it comes back online on time. So my laptop has Windows. Um, um, I think maybe I, I will just uh, wait. I mean, okay. I, I, will, I will stay in this room. I will see what people are doing and I will do it myself after the RCF is online. Okay. I might suggest you at the very least think through what particles you're going to need to identify. Just because that, I, so it's the type of thing where if you know what to do, you need the right one or two lines um and then if you don't then it can be a struggle and we do have experts antonio um christian asked me to uh join that room for a minute and um I, if I leave, I think you, well, actually, you should be able to assign people to breakout rooms as well, I think. Okay. So uh, let me join that room and I will be back in a little bit. Okay. Antonio, can I ask something? Sure. 
Yeah, I have uh, analysis where uh, there are uh, two beam, uh, uh, two beams. One is deuteron gold and one is proton proton. Okay. And uh, you mentioned that I need to modify finalized function, or uh, I add basically uh, the lines that are uh, on your slides. And mm -hmm. after the last line, so the condition and return, should uh, I should put the standard uh, weighting histograms and, and this thing? Yes, yeah. exactly. Thank you. No problem.
Uh, hi, Antonia. Uh, ju just a comment. Now I'm looking at your slide 37 the, uh, with this finalized function. Mm -hmm. And I think there, there is one uh, bracket missing. Uh, at the end, uh, you have closed the, uh, the else. Then you uh, you are closing the else if and not not uh, the for function. You are completely right. Yeah. <laughs> I just fix it. Yeah, I see it. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah, you're welcome.
All right, we have more people in the main room now. I don't know if that's good or bad. We only have one person in the room with uh, Raghav. Um, so if someone wants to, tr is tr trying to set up Rivet on Docker so you can work today, um, I think Raghav is a good resource for that. Let me ask because Takahito is in this room um, and I know Takahito does flow. Um, I think, so there's a need for some testing and debugging for some Monte Carlo, which would have non-zero flow. Are you aware of any AMPT files sitting around somewhere um, at Rick Energies? Does Phoenix um, have any? I'm not aware of any. Uh, so for okay. small systems, actually, I generated plenty of them, but uh, the original files are gone because it they occupy too much, much disk space. space. Chris Bin Binkelberg was not happy about it. Yeah, so it's actually gone. But I have a basic setup. So once you... RCF comes back, Okay, let me, um, I'm going to add you to a discussion on Slack. Could you tell me the channel name? Give, give me a minute. I'm creating oh, sure. it now. Yep. Um, OK, yeah. Now I see the channel. MPT for flow test. Yes. Christine, can I have a question? Yes. Yeah. Uh, in that um, in the data now, I am using uh, this PTA small data sample or something, but this is or this was due for gold gold collision, and if I have a uh, deuteron gold and proton proton collision in my paper, I should for now. Uh, uh, I should work as if I have a gold goal to try if it's work or. Uh... Um, you, ideally, 
yes you sh so you sh should be able to um it would be good to test on a larger uh, on a sample of the right setup uh the uh, system and energy when we have rcf back up um i am actually so the absolute easiest if you can do continue to do development today without it um would be uh waiting until tomorrow and then everyone should be able to see the data that i have generated here and i think i managed i just put a, a path in the um in the chat um and in principle you should just be able to run over that or transfer one file to your laptop and and test it there each file is going to have a lot more events than what you um than the 10 event test okay so for today i will i will try the gold gold to make yeah i we wanted to avoid having everybody also have to simulate a bunch of events um but yeah if it can wait until to well even if it can wait until 6 p.m but for you 6 p.m eastern is midnight so effectively tomorrow Can I ask uh, what are the particles in that uh, data set? Uh, if I will be asking for OP zeros, should I expect uh, some from this small 10 sample? Yes. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. So what we are doing, um, the <laughs> we've been doing all of our testing and developing um, with Pythia Angantir. Um, and one can say, you know, uh, why Pythia on Gintir? Well, it's pretty easy to run. It runs on basically every system. Uh, a setup like um, a setup like AMPT takes a lot longer per event, so we can get a decent event sample with on Gintir pretty fast, um, and it will simulate everything. We just need to flip codes and you know that doesn't mean that all the simulations are realistic or a good physics model but they all work and the other reason is that pythia angantir has a pretty good standard handling of particles from decays and if you poke at this a little bit uh almost all of the heavy ion generators while they make hep mc they almost all have issues with their practical implementation of decays. So if you wanted to look at resonances, it's kind of hard to look at resonances. So for all its strengths and weaknesses, Angantir is just very flexible and easy to use. Okay, I, now I'm at the stage where I'm getting sampled with some entries, but it seems weird and I'm not sure uh, if it can be correct or, or not correct. Or... Remind me what kind of analysis you're doing. Okay. Uh, it's like a um, 
cross section for uh, P0 production, eta production in mediability for proton proton collisions and deuteron gold collisions. Okay. So, for, ah, yeah, if you're looking at, um, if you're looking at uh, proton proton, Antonio? Yep. Do you by chance, you must have, <laughs> you may even have a, a, an Angantir proton proton event on uh, some HEPMC sample on your laptop. Uh, 200 GV, maybe. Yeah. Maybe. I don't know, maybe. Let's see. I know we've got one on ACF. Oh yeah, I have some. Okay. So if Tomas just needs a very small sample for development, do you think that you could make a couple, a file or two available? Um, yes, I think I have 40 files with 500 events each. Maybe I can put everything in a Natar and this. Yeah, maybe I could put, uh, I don't know, on Google Drive and make the link available. You should have, um, if you do Google, if you log into Google with your UT net ID and password, you should get a slightly larger amount of space because UT has some deal with. Uh, it's uh, less than 30 MB. So. Oh, oh, okay. Then it isn't worth worrying about. <laughs> I will step out for just a minute. Okay.
Uh, I'm putting at the chat the, the link for the, the files. It, it's in fact a bit larger than I thought, but it's less than 100 uh, MB. Um, and there, there are one compressed file with uh, 40 uh, files. Each of them has 500 events. That, that is, the, that, is that a HEPMC file there? Yeah. Yes, there are HEPMC files. Okay, because I was uploading some very large file I was asked, uh, that was also generated with Pythia, but that was like close to 1G and it's still uploading. It's, it is taking forever, but okay, thanks. With, with the messages here, is it possible to send a private message to someone? Um, it, uh, that's a good question. Uh, it's going to depend on what I, <laughs> what I set the default says, and I don't honestly remember. Because it's I can, fun. but I don't know if everybody can. Yeah, because I can them. only send it to either everyone or to the hosts and co-hosts. Yeah, I think that must mean so I still have things set up in my Zoom room for how they were for my class. So there's some settings that you can change per meeting and there's some settings that you cannot, um, that are like global. So you can, I think you can do private messages on Slack. But I'm not sure, are, is everyone on, are the students there? They are that? supposed to be. Okay. No, because I wanted to, I was uploading this slide for, and I'm, I'm sorry for my pronunciation of a name. It was Wei Zung, I think. Uh, uh huh. So I, I, I mean, I think you can put it on the Slack and it's probably not really private anyways. There's always a chance. So I, I think it, it's probably not a uh, secret. <laughs> And I wouldn't worry. Unless... Yeah, no, it's not secret, right, but it's more that I, I told him that I would give him a link to sub HEPMC data so that he can use something. But if Antonio uploaded it, uh, the, the this 200 GVPP, he can also just use that now for, for starters because he needs the AMPT and we're trying to figure out and yeah. it seems we can't have that quickly. So at least to have something for the input, he can use that then. Is there, so um, I try to avoid simulating too much in alley route because it's just, we, we have, um, if there's some script we could run out of the box for, well, the problem is AMPT, part of the reason we didn't do a sample of AMPT is because it just takes so darn long to generate any of it. <laughs> If there's a script to run out of the box, we do have a farm at UT that we could try to generate some. And that and we have alley root on that farm. So what Jochen said that there is some uh, code that can generate the uh, AMPT HEPMC which needs, I have not looked too much into that, but it does need Ali, Ali, Ali Root or Ali Builder, one of those things. Yeah. I guess you can know much more of that.
I think part of the problem is any AMPT sample is just going to take a while because AMP, I think I want to say at one point, wasn't it I, on some system, which may not have been the latest, but it was taking several minutes to generate one event as opposed to Angantir will generate like a thousand a minute or so. I try to avoid AMPT and hygiene. Yeah, I, I can use other input simulation files. I'm, yeah, I don't know how to use AMPT files. <laughs> the, the problem is, I, so you can develop stuff with Angantir, but it there is no physical, there's no meaningful event plane. And so if you try to measure V2 and on, if you try to calculate V2 and on Gintir using some kind of event plane method, you're probably always going to get zero. Ah, uh, you mean I cannot calculate V2 with using event plane? You, you can. It's more when you use rivet because it's this it rivet takes in a HEPMC file from some type of Monte Carlo generator. Yeah. And what we've done is uh, to use Pythia Angantir because it's fast, it's versatile, and it works relatively easily. But Pythia Angantir is a specific model. Now, there was a method, there was a paper out that used that calculated V2 using cumulants from Angantir and found a non-zero V2. But I think if you do an event plane method that I think you will probably get zero. Um, but I mean, you can use it for debugging, but it is nice if you have a generator that does not, that has some non-zero that, you know, AMPT would be nice. The, the gold standard would be Jetscape, but that's not going to be feasible on a short time scale. Um, I think you're sort of left if you look at heavy ion generators that have an event plane, you are left with AMPT hygiene or Jetscape. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and hygiene, AMPT has hygiene underneath it. I think it's Phoenix has a hygiene sample with flow implemented with Afterburner. But is the Phoenix, the Phoenix sample is probably not saved as a HEPMC. Oh, I'm talking about S Phoenix. So they might be ah. using HEP Monte Carlo. So we can talk to Ooh. Chris Pink and Move. That's a good, I hadn't thought of that. Takihito, could I ask you to ask Chris? Sure, yeah. Thank you. I, I, will, I will CC you. Thank you. The email. OK, uh, I have analyzed on PP uh, data. And I think that I have a problem with uh, the normalization. Uh, I have. Uh, I have getting the same results if I use the uh, scaling or, or if I just comment it. So I have some bar problem. Uh, can you share your code or maybe update your code on GitHub so I can have a look? Uh, okay, uh, I think I can share it, and if it will take longer, I will uh, upload it to it. Okay. Okay, so I'm sharing uh, my screen.
Uh, now at this moment, I have comment this line, which I thought that should do uh, normalization, and I'm still getting the same uh, results. Mm -hmm. uh, this result I also uh, get uh, for the command for the version where this line was. Uh, yeah, I, I think what's happening is that uh, in both cases. Uh, your histogram is not being normalized because of the check that you have right above that it's looking uh, if the PP and gold gold are filled. Otherwise it will return. So I think it's not getting in the, in the part where your histogram is being normalized. Okay. So for testing, maybe you can just comment out this line that returns if it's not filled. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, and just just to see if it will do something. I mean, I don't know. It's just a yeah, few I, events, but it looks the same, I think. Yeah, yeah, it looks the same. I think that I should also uh, uncomment back uh, the, the, sc the scaling. Ah, yes. Yeah, if I would, <laughs> the test would be quite... Yeah, still the same. Hmm. Yeah, I, we can look at the, yeah, the, uh, I'm not sure how it, uh, call it the counter or, or like, uh, yeah, it's a bit or where I'm, uh, I should count the events is very weird. Mm. I think that this, this is, this should be uh, the CPP or, uh, yeah. Yeah, in your analyze, how, where are you feeling the, the, the counter? In, yeah. Okay. Oh, maybe you're not feeling. Oh no, yes, yeah. you're feeling here. Yes. Um, yeah. So yeah, right now I'm trying to look for pi zero. So this is unstable particles. So I just need to. Uh, yeah. Uh, Can we uh, see your RAN analysis? Oh, uh, okay. Uh, my analysis is here. Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm using Docker, but for me, doesn't work alias for some mm -hmm. reasons. So here I have the full, yeah, uh, sorry, uh, the full command. And in your dot info, you also add the, the option Bing. Yeah, uh, in my dot, uh, yeah, uh, well, but then I have it, but I have it for. Okay, I will run it once again. Okay. 
in the in the init you add that line with the uh, to get the flag right you mean uh, this line at uh, 29 uh, no your dot cc uh, no yes uh, yes this line yes, yes. yeah i think there's uh, some some delay between uh, uh, my audio and and the screen share okay I have run it to one small. Mm, yeah, uh, I don't know. Dudes. Yeah, this is if I look at this uh, uh, so so pp like uh, at the plot, it's really weird. I would assume. I uh, know that that's usually what you have for the counter. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's uh, just the number, of, uh, the sum of weights. Sure. Yeah. It's in log scale, so it's. Difficult to see because it's not appearing the, the numbers on, on the yeah. one. Can can I do in a rivet something like a uh, C out <laughs> like a print? Yes, yes. Uh, C out number. will work for the bug perfectly. Okay, so for example, here I would uh, like to know the value of uh, the sum. Mm -hmm. So. Something, something like that sh should work. Yes, I do this all the time. <laughs> yeah. And then... Finish cross section. I didn't see. I can see my C out output. Error in a piece of differencing. No. Yeah, yeah, I can see it here. And there is an error that I'm de referencing a no analysis object pointer. Yes. I can make it bigger. Uh, do you thing. have the global variable for the counters uh, in the bottom? No, part of no, I think that this I, uh, I didn't. Uh, yeah, this, this counter pointer. Uh, I will. Oh, you have it. I will check your your slides. And this count. Okay, uh, I I have run out of my ideas right now. I think there's something bad with these. Yes. But uh, yeah. Okay, let's see how it's declared in the in each part. Yeah. Uh, okay. There is a so pp not pp. The pp ah, is yes. for a histogram. Yes, that's the problem. So that can be our solution. And also, uh, yeah.
Okay. I still have some error, but now I, I have the number. Yes. But so I will look at the book. Sometimes a different error is success. <laughs> yeah, but it, it just seems that it's trying to use a, a histogram that it's not booked. Okay, so here I have... Um, I see it again. I need also change these guys in that in this in the condition. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we read complete, no errors. So I think that now it, it should work, so. Uh. Oh, still the same. <laughs> That's no okay. So uh, the P PDF version is okay. So I think I, I think it's different, right? Because it's yeah. No, no, it's okay. Minus I, one. Yeah. That it was some. Um, uh, I don't know. In my memory, I, I I have the previous. Okay. So so now now it's okay. Yeah. So thank you. No problem. So we actually have a dearth of people asking questions. Um, so we have Raghav in, alone in his breakout room. We have Vitautas alone. Christian has come back into the main room. Did everybody get help figuring out how to identify their particular set of particles? I'm going to take silence as a yes, which maybe I shouldn't. I'm seeing a couple yeses. Oh, I should have. I, I figured out how to run Rivet on my local computer, but I, I haven't. I have very simple particles, so I was assuming it would be easy, but I haven't done it yet. Uh, so that I think you're simple does not necessarily mean easy um so i think you have so most people are going to have pi kp and so this actually was uh, this came up already in the discussion because at some point you have to define a many of you have to define a primary particle um, this is this is Antonio's cat, by the way, who appears on all Zoom calls with Antonio. Um, so, what we are, if you need a primary particle, and you need to figure out what on earth a primary particle is, um, what we're going to do for this workshop is that you're gonna use the Alice definition. I will point a link, I will use a pointer, I, I will post on Slack what an example that Christian found that is what Alice does. Um, because Alice wrote a, oh, Alice Rivet developers worked with uh, the Rivet, Rivet developers and came up with a definition of a primary particle, which is not as trivial as you would think at first. Um, because you have to take all of these final state particles and figure out how you sort them. Um, 
what we're going to do for this workshop is that you can just use that projection written by Alice. So you're going to use an Alice definition. And then um, I have tried to start discussions in both Star and Phoenix about what the appropriate definitions for those experiments would be. I literally, I got no response from Star. And I got a response from Phoenix that was effectively, why would we ever need to do that? It's really clear. Um, so, yeah. I think, David, you, I believe, have charged particle spectra or pi kp spectra? I uh, charged particles, so just pions and protons, actually. Yeah, that's. Uh, See, the problem is that there's a lot of particles which decay into charged pions and protons. Okay, but sorry. Which experimentally look like primary particles. And then there's particles which are not included in that, like the decay particles from lambdas and KZR shorts. Okay. So yeah, if, if we're still at that place, I, I will gladly join said breakup room and uh, breakout room and uh, play catch up. I, I think that is the um, example. So let me actually share my screen. And minimize some stuff so you don't see the dumb black boxes. Um, so here, and I just put a link to this on the Slack. You, let's see. Alice primary, par charged Alice primary particles. Um, so here you're using this Alice primary particles, and then your, you know, your cuts will be different uh, star. Well, depending on the paper, star may use different eta cuts. Um, the momentum cut just means that you only have particles you might actually analyze. And then the charge greater than zero is going to mean that you only have charged particles. Um, so you can use this projection to get your loop over all particles and what we're probably gonna what we'll have what with the understanding that what we're gonna do after the workshop before any of this gets committed to the well before any of this gets approved by the experiments which still do not have a formal procedure for approving rivet analyses and then committed into the um rivet repository is that we will have to get the experiments well the simplest is you copy the alice definition and do a string replacement of alice for phoenix or star and that is the different definition and then we have to make sure that that's the right one for each experiment which doesn't well, currently exist you just said Yes, it does not currently exist. So for okay. code development during this workshop, you're going to use the Alice definition, which also is going to mean you're going to have to include some of these includes. I believe that you you are probably going to need these guys at least. OK. And yes, you're going to write it to use an Alice definition. To some extent, having working analyses that use the Alice definition can make it easier to do the political task of telling the experiments that they need to come up with a definition because you provide an example analysis where the definition is useful. Right. I think this is a. Uh, So I, this is a, when you do primary, when you try to figure out what a primary particle is, I think the experimentalist answer is that it's obvious. It's all stuff that has less, that, that looks like it comes from the primary vertex. But 
when you dig in and try to do this on the Monte Carlo level, it's far from clear. And actually, when you try to get into the messiness that is resonances like the Lambda 1520, for instance, this is an even, even dicier one. Okay. And then Tamash had a question. Um, yes. Uh, I am. Uh, I have uncommented uh, the line which we comment uh, with Antonia, and the normalization doesn't work. And I think that it's due to the, this four cycle that is going through each element in the C uh, underscore C. It sees uh, only the one one element that is uh, so underscore gold gold. And for some reason, it doesn't go to the second element, the so underscore PP. And I don't know why. Uh, can I quickly double check how many elements I have in the uh, underscore C? Like at, at the, at the map? Uh, or Okay, quickly share my screen. Uh, yeah, to... I'm gonna defer this back to Antonio. Okay, so I just put here a C out, and the output is that I see only. Yeah, yeah only I, I think I know what's happening. Uh, yeah, if you look at the code. Okay, it will print the first one, probably it's gold gold. And then it will see that it's, uh, I, I can't see the, the whole code. Uh, okay. Um, ah, so you, I, I think that it, it, it can cause this, this break. Yes, that's why it's not printing the, the next one. Yeah, but, uh, so, so, I would now, I think that there, uh, or I would expect here a continuous. If uh, there is no goal, goal, then check another element if there is a PP. Well, this, uh, this loop, I mean, you yeah. just, if one of them are empty, uh, you already should not uh, execute finalize. That's why you just, if you find one, Empty, you just break and you skip finalize. Okay, uh, so when I'm uh, running the code, uh, I first run it with uh, in this uh, run analysis dot sh. We first with a beam uh, pp, mm -hmm. and, and then with a uh, beam uh, gold gold. Mm -hmm. And here, uh, I sh or where the finalize is going uh, is 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 there end? Uh, um, if you uh, go back to the slides, there is it's like thirty nine. There is a command to merge uh, both outputs, and then it will call finalize and, and normalize the, the histograms and make ratios if you have. Okay, yeah, so basically here in uh, run analysis sh, I, I can first run the command with uh, pp, then uh, a, a command with uh, gold gold, and then this uh, run merge. Yes, just be sure oh, really to much. select uh, different output names because right now they are both uh, rivet. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. No problem. Christine, you're muted. I think you're trying to say something. Oh, 
Oh, yes, thank you, Antonio. <laughs> I, I tried to be very good about muting whenever I'm not speaking, and that is not always what I want to do. Um, we're, I'm seeing people's questions slow down. Um, I suspect because people need a little time to actually work. Um, we still have another hour that we scheduled. If we're just sitting around on a on a Zoom chat, not talking to each other, that's not terribly useful. Tomorrow we have a light, a very light program. Um, so the the program for tomorrow is a few tricks with making oh well a little bit on finishing touches um and how to you know if you have a ton of histograms that you want to that you need to set the titles and axis labels you know i wrote a pearl script that will help you do that faster um but there's only three slides and the bulk of the day is going to be breakout rooms and working one-on-one -on -one. so tomorrow is going to be much more like what we're doing now um if you have an analysis so if you have an analysis by tomorrow around noon which um other than something like a centrality calibration is ready for higher statistics tests. In the afternoon tomorrow, I am going to be running higher statistics runs on RCF with analyses which are done and ready for higher statistics. So if you, for instance, if you're doing single particle spectra, this very well could be uh, you very well could be ready tomorrow at noon. Um, and that, yeah, so if you're getting there, it's a good idea to push through so you're ready by noon. We will do this again on Thursday. So Thursday is, I believe, exclusively set aside to either troubleshooting, um, in breakout rooms, or if anybody is ready to present results on Thursday, you can present results on Thursday. Um, let me ask, oh, someone unmuted. Yes, Will. Um, yes, I was gonna say, if we are uh, about done, do you wanna meet with me and Charles about the issue we were talking about on Slack? uh i need a breather after we're done okay, cool. um let's... i have a question yes yes okay. um so i i just saw um a shared screen of a run analysis script and and i think like the they were selecting the system in that in that script um, but I mean, assuming that you have the, I guess the default version where, you know, sent was just Jen, couldn't you just, um, select the, the system that you want in the .cc file by doing say beam and then choosing which, which system you want? Yeah, you can include. Um, I think you have this on, on slides. Let me see. From 35 to 39, um, okay. you can include these uh, flags so you can select during your uh, run analysis, uh, which is the, the beam that you're, that you're using. Yeah, so do you do you have to change the run analysis? You don't have to, right? Yeah, you have multiple uh, collision systems and energies in your... Right, rate. I do. Yeah, then you have to run uh, once uh, per each collision system. Oh, I see. 
No, I mean, um, but do you have to change the run analysis script? Yes. Um, okay. Um, so I think I just saw a flash of um, where it was changed, but do you have that somewhere where? Um... I can include in this slide. Okay. So while Antonio is doing that, I'm going to ask, because some of you are on hold because um, because RCF is down. If you do not anticipate having more questions today that would require a breakout room, please click yes in the participants list. Today meaning before noon, so in the next you know, 53 minutes. Okay, I'm seeing no answer is by far the the winning the vote. Oh. Hi, Antonio, I still have one more question. Sure. Uh, yeah, so I was looking at some of the um, analysis that are already implemented um, on rivet.hepforge.org. Um, and then I see like options to where like you could choose a, a particular um, system type by using some function called beam, but I, I don't see that they necessarily change any. Uh... Yeah, you can use um, to check the, the beam and there's also functions to check the energy. Yeah. Uh, if, if you're using uh, PTA or Angature, this will work fine. Uh -huh. And then uh, you don't really need to implement any kind of flag. But uh, there are some generators. If you're using a uh, dual, for example, this will not work very well. It would be very difficult to differentiate um, PP uh, with and without uh, medium FX. We're using PTR as the event generator here, aren't we? Uh, yes, but I don't know. In principle, you want to do as generic as possible your code ah uh, okay <laughs> so it, it you know, for for the so it, it was me who showed you that that example right that, that was right. what you referred to um i think for the analysis you're implementing so it's it's a total multiplicity and and transverse energy analysis for multiple systems i think any generator i can think of who would attempt at generating that would have reasonable beams in the HEPMC file, if I'm not mistaken. There's one generator <laughs> that doesn't. Which one's that? Jetscape. Jetscape. <laughs> oh, um, which... then, then, you, then you should definitely just rely on everybody 
uh, uh, giving it, and then we should take it up with Jetscape, saying you can yes. use your generator package. Well, yeah, so, uh, of course, the reason why Antonio and I are doing this in great part is to generate rivet analyses, which we can then use for Jetscape. Um, and when we started trying to actually use Rivet with Jetscape, we discovered that there were a number of things in Jetscape's HEPMC files, which were, shall we say, non-standard. Um, because it had always been an afterthought, and I honestly don't know if anybody had ever tried to use the HEPMC output from Jetscape before. Um, so uh, the official tag right now uh, does not actually totally gets the particle codes incorrectly and will not return any final state particles. Um, and we're trying to push through to get a fix. Yeah, yeah, I know. I know. Yeah. I know. So I mean, it's it, it, it's it's probably going to be a bit of a tangential discussion for this forum here. But um, if 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 you ask me, I think the practice of having to set the beam type for all analyses is is possibly a bit dangerous, right? So having to set it as an option. So I mean, certainly this is not how we do it for say PP plus or minus EP and so on, rivet analyses that you have to specify the, the beam type when, when you run the analysis. Uh, so I, I I would imagine that there could be a bit of pushback when these analyses are then committed to, to the central repo. If you understand what I mean. So you, I think, sorry, I think I may have befud befuddled the conversation. So right now, Jetscape cannot, you, you can't put the beam, the beam particle is, are not in the output in HEPMC. And so if you ask for the beam particle inside Rivet, Jetscape will never find it, ever. OK, so what happens if you just run a normal PP Rivet analysis provided by Atlas, for example? Because it, so there, the beams method is not called explicitly in the analysis code, but it's called in the bit of code that checks the beam type against what's written in the info file. Mm -hmm. Do you have to then always call analyses with ignore beams or, or what should you do? Because even though it's not explicitly called in the analysis code, it's, it's implicitly called when the analysis is loaded. Yeah, then I think it will require ignore beams. Because I, I think they don't even mark the beam particles with stop yeah. code 4, I think. So do you know who implemented the HEPMC writer? Was it Kolya? Yeah. And we've been talking to him, and he's going to try to get a fix so that at the least it does something which probably works for the vast majority of analyses, um, which is that final state particles will be given status code one. Um, and the problem is that no non-final state particles will be written at all. Um, and then because there's no decays by default, that also means that pi zeros show up as a final state particle. Um, and then it is entirely unclear what to do with, uh, say, the Lambda 1520. Um, which is probably a little tricky for a lot of people because it's, yeah. So uh, the, the thing is that the code 
that is needed probably touches multiple parts of Jetscape. And the collaboration probably needs a bit of a motivation to view this as a somewhat urgent problem. That said, at the end of this workshop, we may have 40 or so analyses combining things with uh, what my undergrads have done, depending on how many are almost done but just need slight polishing. And that then becomes a little bit of an, you know, that might, that might create a motivating factor. Okay. What, what I get from all this is uh, I will stay out of it. <laughs> No, I will. I might try to draw you in for technical assistance in what exactly we should do. Okay, so I think for for technical assistance regarding the whole interfacing to happen, see, I sh would probably refer you to either Andy Buckley or Andrew Verbitsky instead. And Andrei Verbitsky, as in the guy in Poland. I think he's at Daisy. Okay, because there's a um, Polish Andrzej Rybicki who is one of my husband's best friends. That would be convenient. Okay, never. Mind. Okay, back to this workshop. I only got there are two people. And they're both my students who said that they don't think they're going to have questions in the next 40 minutes. So I am going to let me see if anyone jumps in with questions or I will start going down the line. I have a question. Go for it. OK, so uh, I have tried to run this uh, rivet merge and it gives me a uh, error with some rivet yoda.cc something. So I will share a screen. So you can identify the error. Uh, I'm trying to Google it right now. So uh, this is the error. So I, I have first, I have around the, I don't know this for, uh, E then for gold gold that was uh, okay and then then I have around the, the uh, rivet march and yeah uh, the error occurred. So so th this is a horrible error message because it can mean multiple things and none of them basically refers to what is what is being written. Mm -hmm. Uh, most, most likely it means that the analysis is not being loaded. So where did you specify? So you're running rivet merge? Yes. Where did you specify the, the files that you're actually merging? Let me just see. Yeah. Uh, there. Yeah. there. Um, what does this minus zero mean? Uh, it's oh, minus capital O. Oh, it's capital O. Is that a... I think that this uh, I have from... I just basically copy uh, the line at the, the slide 40. Yeah. Oh, rivet merge doesn't find your analysis. Yeah, uh, and now you mean uh, that it doesn't find uh, the this this output, or it doesn't find the it, analysis. It doesn't find your .so file. Um, normally yeah. when you run rivet, you have to do the minus minus PWD. If I now remember correctly, 
rivet merge cannot use minus minus PWD. Um, yeah, so. So what I would normally suggest someone to do is to do export rivet analysis path equals PWD. But I don't know if that would actually work with the Docker. Yeah, this uh, I have in my around SH. Yeah, so here uh, there is a uh, rivet build, then a rivet analysis path. Uh, yeah. And uh, here is these two uh, free, free commands. So two rivet analysis, one for, for uh, Yes, I, I, I know, but so, I mean, someone feel free to interrupt me if I'm getting on thin ice here, uh, because this is now a Docker question. I think what is going on here is that when you do export rivet analysis path equals PWD, you tell your own machine that there is something called rivet analysis path, and that is your current directory. Now you run rivet merge inside your Docker container, and it will not find rivet analysis path equals PWD anywhere because it's running inside the Docker container. Yeah, okay. So I might say <laughs> it may be best to table this and wait until RCF is back up because at least the Plan A is that code development is done at least temporarily today on Docker, but we would be doing, we is the royal we, um, I would be running on RCF over a larger sample size to get higher statistics. And then I would have to use rivet merge to merge them which is to say that the minutia of how you make sure this works in Docker are quite likely obsolete at 6 p.m. Eastern today. Okay, so basically advice that I should wait until RCF uh, is working and then try the yeah. analysis on RCF. I, I think if this is a very specific rivet merge issue related to paths not getting set in docker yeah let's just wait until it's an obsolete problem and then you do rivet merge on a different system uh okay <laughs> the other thing that you could do is go poke your head in with uh into the um, room with ragav because ragav has much more experience with docker than i do so you could try to debug it a bit with Ragav. Okay, thanks. I, I will just ask him and uh, then I will go with this. So, not with the solution, but with the way uh, that I will wait for our seat. Is there, is there, hello, uh, sorry. Uh, is there a strained list um, for all the collision systems somewhere? A what so, list? Like uh, a list or, you know, like when you select a beam type and, and it's a string or, and for example, if you were going to do a good gold, it would just be AU, AU. But I have so many other systems that are not like say helium three. I don't know what the string name for that will be. So is there a list somewhere? Uh, okay. If you're using uh, the way it showed in the slides, you can create your strings. So if you have uh, copper copper, for example, uh, you can just add uh, in the info yeah, okay, file. Okay. And, and yeah, okay. Yeah, uh, okay. Okay. All right, I may start going down the list and asking 
people how things are going. Um, Ajiro, I think you're, it sounds like you are more or less set and you're not shy about asking your questions, which is good. Yeah, I, I'm very notorious for asking a lot of questions. <laughs> It's kind of silly, but at least it makes you understand what's going on. <laughs> there is no, 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 this stuff isn't silly. Silly is not asking a question and being stuck for three days when it would take 10 seconds to ask. All right, Austin. Yeah. Oh, sorry, Ijiro, yes. Uh, no, and I, I was just going to sort of summarize because I was going to um, head out, but I, I mean, so I think the plan is that we should just try a little bit on Docker and see how much we can go and that ultimately we would want to switch to RCF um, tomorrow, maybe. Yeah, if you can write the guts of the code where you're filling the histogram on Docker, then um, it, because all this stuff in analyze, this is where it's very analysis specific. So we can't march people right. along in lockstep like we did yesterday. Um, and finalize, so if you get to where you need to debug finalize, when RCF is up tomorrow, um, so when I have run over higher statistics, for instance, the way we've been doing this with undergrads, we is Antonio, you should understand that Antonio does all the work. Um, the, the way <laughs> that they've been doing this is that we get a run. So there's a rivet output file. Um, there's a bunch of rivet output files run over higher statistics. And then when you run rivet merge, it runs the latest version of the code. So if you need to do code development in finalize and you're, you don't need to run over everything again, if analyze is right, because rivet merge mm -hmm. reruns finalize. So if okay. you're okay. somewhere tomorrow where you're mostly there, but you need to work a little bit on finalize, then you, well, tomorrow I won't have higher statistics samples for anybody but I will be able to start running higher statistics samples. And it's possible to do some code development like that. Okay. Austin, I think you may have gotten a little behind yesterday and are catching up still. Is that right? Uh Yes, I, I've mostly I've mostly caught up from yesterday. Um, okay. I have all the histograms that were in HEP data, so I just have to um, make ratio plots with them and such. Cool. Um, yeah. So I, I just actually saw your your message about AMPT ten minutes ago or so. Okay. So I, yeah. I'm looking at that now. Okay. That would be cool if you can do it. We don't need a high, a lot of events. We need some events. Okay. Which is good because they take forever. Charles and Will. Um, yeah. Uh, are you saying, uh, basically, I think what's happening is we're both, and I say we, it, it, Will's doing it primarily right now, um, working on slides 29 through 32. Uh, because we have this problem with the histogram and the, and the binning, we can't actually um, successfully run it, but we can put the skeleton in. So I think okay. that's what we're doing. Okay. I gave Charles and Will the same analysis because it is a it beast. Plot. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, I agree with Charles. Basically, what I'm doing right now is writing the event loop to fill these histograms once we get them formatted correctly. Cool. David, I think you now are up and running on Docker, so you can do some development today. Um, but yeah, um, I, I have a couple of just kind of like random minor questions. Um, 
So when I made the plots, when I added the, the dash dash present working directory, I've got a terrible echo here, but um, I got, it, it reproduced the data for my input.yoda file, which was good, um, but it didn't actually do any output for any of them that were the, uh, the ratio plots. And I'm not sure why, but when I tried to recreate it, I also like blanked all of my plots again. So <laughs> I'm probably missing some sort of a, a command line argument too. Um, but I guess my question is, it should, when, oh, maybe I should just share my screen. Uh, here we go. So if I go into where my code is, um, when I have a ratio plot, I have this ref name, and this is just kind of copying from Antonio's code, I'm assuming. Um, then the actual ratio plot is referring to the ref name, and the ref name is picking that name up directly from where the code is. So I would think then that this should, in fact, pick up like, like this plot itself should be able to pick up the input Yoda file data, um, but it appears to not be the case. Um, so that, that, that is a very open question, but I'm not, is there something that's obviously wrong with this code? Well, I, I, I don't see anything obviously wrong. Um, okay. Yeah, it seems right. But then you, you did the 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 ratio plots on finalize, right? I did the ratio plots how? I'm say again. Uh, on finalize, it's where you you really make the ratio, right? No, I didn't do anything in the finalize. So I mean, there's really no data here. Like if we go into finalize, it is empty. Um, okay. But then when I did. When I ran the make analysis, which I'm, like I said, I, I just killed it when I did this. So maybe, so here is my command for make analysis. So is this rivet makes HTML. I'm not sure I want this MC errors business here. Um, but the present working directory, they said the output is the sky and maybe I needed this input equals rivet.yoda, I think. Uh, but that's got the rivet.yoda in it too. So maybe, maybe this, maybe I'm completely lost here. So then I went in and it says it's making them. Uh, and I got a bunch of errors this time. Um, and when I go into the test plot, Uh, okay, so probably the most convenient way to look at these is actually to just open them up. Index is here. All right, so I blew it up like everything's blank now. Um, so <laughs> I can't even ask my question. I, I, I killed the one. But what I what I had had is that this replotted the input Yoda files from the HEP data everywhere. Um, except where the ratios were. And then the ratio plots were just blank across the board. Um, but I mean, it's, it's not a big thing until I actually make Sorry. the data. You know, did you yep. say you didn't do any, oh, you did, you don't have anything in finalize. I think there was a, <laughs> was there something Antonio to do in finalize to get the ratio data, the reference data or am I? So how, how, how did you book the ratios again? Can you go back? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so the, the, the actual ratio was just, was it was the 2D scatter plot in the input, right? So for instance, uh, inside of my Yoda file, open. So then there would be this, this guy that's 412, right? And so D, O, Four X O one Y O two. All right, so like it exists, the data is there. 
Now, and, and that's just an output of the analysis that I'm rivetizing, right? Um, and so that is, so this is the ratio of, of uh, P bar to P in, in this centrality range. So fine. Um, and and it's, it's pointing to the right place. And then when I run the actual analysis, I'm going to have to, of course, fill in the P bar and fill in the P and then do the, the code that uh, Antonio showed us today to divide them to make what rivet says the, the, the uh, whatever it comes out, the, the agent here prediction is, right? Um, but as long as it was bringing over all of the, the yeah, experimental it, it, results, it, it, does, it, it, over, it right? doesn't bring over the experimental results for the ratio. Okay. That's your problem, right? Yes, yes, that's exactly my question. I'm very meandering about that. And it's, it's a, is it a scatter 2D? So the object in the rivet analysis corresponding to the ratio plot, is that a scatter 2D? Okay. The underscore S map or whatever it is, is that a map of scatter 2Ds or is it something? I think else? it is, in fact. It is, yes. It is. Um, when you call this book of that in particular, uh -huh. back up there, can you try just after your ref name? Uh, th this was something in an older version of, of Rivet, and I don't know if that has ever been corrected. There you had for the scatter 2D data type add explicitly true if you wanted to transport over the data. To, so just comma and a Boolean, which is true. Like that. Okay. Can, can, can you check if that compiles? Because it would be really funny if, if that was indeed the issue. <laughs> All right. Oh, that's not helpful. Um... The run wants to do everything, but really. Yeah, but that, that's fine. Then we can just see if it works. Oh, sorry. Yeah, it compiled okay. Okay, can how how long does it take to run it and and plot the histograms? Uh, it takes no time to run it, but I killed my histogram plotting. My, my histogram plotting command is uh, wasn't plotting anything that I showed. I, I thought I just had to add the PWD, but there was something else that wasn't plotting too. So I'm afraid I can't recreate the entire problem, but running quick because it's like 10 events or something. So there's, there's no agentier data to speak of. So it's run now. And it wrote the histograms. And then, so I need rivet, make HTML. And I know I need the PWD, but no, I- you, you don't need any more than just rivet.yoda right there. Then it will just plot it to the default directory, rivet plots. Like this? Yeah, this, this should be fine. Okay. Yeah, it's not a good sign, but okay. All right, so let me open that up. Either you're running on an insanely fast computer or you have some fancy tricks for the plotting because this is not the usual LaTeX plotting. It uh, take much longer. Yeah, my computer is new, but it's not super, super fast. But I mean, it's just making PNGs. It wasn't LaTeXing it, so. But okay, so here's rivet plot. Here's yeah, they were just all empty. It wasn't it wasn't okay. empty, whatever. So I, I have a local option I'm missing. So but I, I updated my Yoda file too, so maybe I have some debugging on my so you, you have you have your star 2010 something something Yoda file there. Yeah. And that has all your stuff in it. Oh, <laughs> okay. So, 
Sorry, I when I did the said command, I was hoping it would substitute and it didn't. So I have to oh. fix it. That's oh, there, there, there's your problem. Yeah, that'll that'll kill everything. Um, okay, so you can you can use said again. Yeah, it looks like you tried. Yeah, to I don't know about there. those escape characters. Yeah, that clearly didn't work. But that's an easy, the good news is that's an easy problem to fix. Right. Yeah, now I can fix that. So that's. <laughs> yeah, that didn't work either. Okay. So I will. I, 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 it, it, it's, it, it says my rivet name and not rivet name, which you put. Right. I got sick of typing star underscore 2010 dash. I eight three seven zero seven five, and so I made it a local variable. But when I used the sed command, it didn't substitute. Um, no, no. But it seemed like you were trying to substitute again, and I think you tried to substitute the wrong thing. So if you go to, because you were then downloading it off of HEP data, and you haven't really been editing the Yoda file at all, the right. easiest the easiest thing to do is probably to Just download a fresh version from HEP data. And then you should be able to literally copy and paste the command out of the slides and just replace the name of your analysis and change right. the, the one that's a fresh download. Yeah, yeah. When you said a, a lazy physicist is a good one, if you get too lazy, things fall apart. That's what I did. All right. B, F, right? All right. Yeah, sorry to hold you off. This will take me no. a moment. OK, so let me check in. So we have, of, of participants, we have my students. Who You guys are free to go. And I know you're going to ask Antonio for help offline anyways. Um, Antonio is Superman. Um, Zeng, Zen Dong, um, let me check in with you. How are you doing? Um, yes. Uh, actually, uh, as you know, I, I cannot get into any uh, Linux terminal right now. So uh, I'm trying to install the WSL on my Windows. Uh, um, I think Docker has, Christian said Docker has not worked on Windows. It, it, it does have problems at least. Um, uh, this WSL thing, it is like a virtual machine on Windows. Is that Docker or I'm? Docker is a, I don't know anything about WSL. Docker is a very specific program that lets you, it's it's for containers so you can run in a, in a, in a in, let me try to explain it. I, I'm sure I'm gonna get my technical details wrong, but it creates a local environment that is the same from one computer to the next so that you don't have to um, do as much setup on all sorts of environmental variables. And in principle, it works on Windows, except that in practice, it has had a number of issues. And I believe Christian said that it, he hasn't seen it work. He hasn't seen rivet work in Docker for Windows. That um, is to say, it might so, be the path of least resistance to wait until RCF is back online. But with a virtual machine, it should in principle work, although it's a much more complicated setup. And I might be inclined to say, again, you very well could be better off just waiting until RCF is back online, unless you have access to a Linux system. Um, I don't know if this is useful or not, but I'm running on Windows and I'm running oh. Windows subsystem for Linux. 
And it, it is a little bit of a pain to poke around and get everything running, but it, it's running just fine. Well, yeah, okay. yeah, that, that's what I was talking about, like a subsystem Linux, something. Yeah, like. um, so it, it, it's running okay, but even though it's Windows subsystem for Linux, uh, you, you've got to go to like the, there, there's like, if you were to Google like Docker, Docker for Windows subsystems for Linux, um, there's there's a lot of information there, but it's 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 a relatively straightforward. But but you need I needed to install Docker for Windows from there. I couldn't just install the Linux version of Docker under Windows subsystem for Linux. But they they have the program so that it plays nicely together. So. I, I might would, ask David yeah. if you would be willing to help Zengdong get set up. That might be a solution. Uh, I can try. I mean, I, I would have to go back and do <laughs> googling to try to recreate my meandering stuff to get everything going. But yeah, I can. I can definitely try. Now, if you guys took notes, if it well, if someone took notes when you're trying to do this, then those notes we could post on the workshop page so that they would be available to other people afterwards. Yeah, I should have taken good notes. I... Yeah, I, I will also take some notes. Uh, just I, I'm not sure because I think uh, David has succeeded, but I'm not sure I'm going to get to the end of this road. Uh, I'm still installing this subsystem right now. So maybe a couple ah. of minutes ago, I need to reboot my laptop which means I have to access this um, workshop for- Yeah, okay. Um, so let me say we won't stay online just for that. Now, if you, and then if, and maybe you can ask David and I might loop in Raghav as well on Slack if you need help. If you guys need a room to use, a Zoom room to use for discussions, I will give the, um, I will give the instructors a link to a Zoom room that they can use without passwords if there are ad hoc meetings that need to happen. Um, and that's probably not going to be solved now. And then um, actually, I think that leaves us, well, when we finish answering David's questions that would leave us with organizers and one of my students. Um, um, which, yeah. Uh, how late are we going to open? We're going to, I think we're going to wrap it up very soon. It, we're, I think we're checking to see if this fit work, this fix worked for David, and I think that it did. It did, in fact. Um, so, I mean, just to interrupt, since, since it's here, um, I, we went in, and uh, as Christian told me, I added the, that Boolean true into the ratio, and only one of my ratio plots that I can see plotted the, the data, and there it is. So, apparently, that is the fix. Very arcane fix, but uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm happy it worked. So I, I'm sure that I heard at some point why there is a very good reason that you have to add the additional Boolean to actually get the data points when you have a scatter 2D, but, but that is nevertheless the case. Um, um, it's, yeah. So uh, since I'm taking up everyone's attention, I, I, I have a question that probably, the answer is probably, it's just the way that it is. But that whole cut event inside of the code that is just like it, it, it's not a function, like it's just a, it's not a C++ statement. Is that just that Rivet has like a good magic preprocessor that then generates the full C++ code and just need to understand that there's magic words that work? Not to sound flippant about it, but I mean, that's, that when is. When you say, when you say the cut, that that is when you declare your projections. Um, or uh, there was like a cancel event uh, exists. 
our checked it was inside of the default code too actually it's it's a rivet uh yeah this is a silly question but let me see if i can oh i can't even find where the slides are like this Uh, sorry, I should have brought the slides up first. Uh, day two. Veto event. There it is. Um. is uh, that is equivalent to writing break. Oh. It is equivalent to the C++ statement break. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it just looks like a, a very magic C++ kind of thing to do. So it, it is a keyword, basically. Yeah, so it, 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 it is a keyword equivalent to just, to just a, a, a breaking analyze or return basically. Okay. And then I think, oh, sorry. The, the, the place where there's a lot of C++ magic involved is, are these cut object objects used when you declare the projections. Um, but uh, that's another story for another day, I think. Okay. And then, and, and then part of the magic of the break is that it's smart enough to not fill the things that happened before in the current loop is that something that it does that is not something that it does it is equivalent to just putting return right there okay so unfortunately it doesn't rewind and and undo what you already did okay Okay, I, I'm sure I'm going to have a lot more practical questions when I get to it, but that that was my that was my short list. So thank you. That's they a good indeed, list. They were indeed uh, good questions and uh, obvious traps. Awesome. Thanks. All right, I think we are down to uh, questions that require more time offline before they can be fully formed. So I would propose that we break for the day. We're also down to two participants. <laughs> Thumbs up. It sounds good to me anyway. All right. Thanks, guys. We'll see you guys tomorrow. See you. See you. Bye. Bye.